And as we approach execution day, there are still questions the state is not answering, like how much will it cost taxpayers for the drugs to put a man to death? The Indiana Capital Chronicle is just one news outlet that has submitted a formal request to find out and had that request denied. 21 Alive's John Wagner talks with Nikki Kelly, the Chronicle's editor-in-chief, tonight. So, Nikki, you've been a journalist for a long time. I know you've done a lot of information requests over the years. Um, pretty standard, pretty cut and dry most of the time, I would imagine. Um, but this one was a little bit different. Tell us about the process for trying to find out the cost of these drugs. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a simple question, just the cost of the drugs, but um, it took the Department of Correction more than three months to deny our request. Not just ours, other journalists asked the same thing. Uh, the law they're citing is a law that was put in place in 2017 after a lawsuit to learn about the drugs that the state was then using for executions. And that law says basically it protects the confidentiality of where they buy the drugs from. The idea being, uh, you know, companies or manufacturers that would sell these drugs to the states, they were getting bombarded with negative attention for being involved tangentially in the execution process. So they just sort of said, no, we're, we're not going to sell these anymore. How has this sort of panned out in other states? Have other journalists anywhere else been able to get this information and find out what something like this costs in the back end? Yeah, there have been a couple of states this year who have used pentobarbital for ex executions. And, and we know from reporting in those states that they've paid uh, in one state, it was $100,000. In another state, it was $200,000. Uh, you know, the point is, I don't know what the right price is, but the fact is, is that taxpayers should be able to know what we're paying for it. And I do want to note that that law I just mentioned, it doesn't bring up, it doesn't say anything about them not being able to give the cost. It's all about identifying the manufacturer. And what we requested was an invoice and they could redact everything else but the cost. And actually, uh, right now, you can see that response from the state on the Indiana Capital Chronicle website. And and you're right, they, they, you know, they say because of this Indiana code and this Indiana code, they are denying your request. But uh, I, I just don't see the language there, and I could be wrong, uh, but I don't see the language there that would bar them from disclosing the cost. Uh, and I want to let our viewers know that 21 Alive has now sent a request to the state of our own, uh, requesting, based on their denial of your request, that if they can't release the exact number, you know, the exact cost of that medication, uh, at least a round figure of the medication plus the labor cost for the day of the execution, if they want to lump in anything else relevant, uh, just a rounder figure for taxpayers to understand the cost of these things. Um, in, in, in the course of your story, have you found, uh, you know, a, a more complete number of what it costs to put somebody to, to death around the country? Not really. And to be fair, even in those states, that we found where we know the cost, you know, those states argued, well, it's it would cost far more to house that person for the rest of their lives, you know, while they're sitting, you know, if they were, say, given life without parole instead of the death penalty. So th there's an argument to be made there. We are certainly not done trying to get that information from the state. We filed a complaint with the Indiana Public Access Counselor today, which is sort of the administrative step we have to go through just in case we would eventually want to go to the courts. We, we first have to get a ruling from the Public Access Counselor on the topic. We should talk about why we're talking about this in the first place. It's uh, Attorney General Todd Rokita and Governor Eric Holcomb saying Indiana needs to really get back to executions. And uh, Joseph Corcoran, who killed four people here in Fort Wayne back in 1997, is uh, he's on deck, so to speak. Yeah, we haven't had an execution in Indiana since 2009, and it has been because we haven't been able to get the drugs. Indiana previously used a three-drug cocktail. Now we're going to this single drug cocktail of just the pentobarbital, which has been used in federal executions and several other states, you know, recently, but it's new to Indiana. Um, now, I do know that Joseph Corcoran, he's still got some options in front of him. His execution is currently set for December 18th. We have spoken with his attorney who has told us they will be filing a petition for clemency from Governor Eric Holcomb, who can then choose or not to set aside that death sentence. 
Yeah, if there's two cases happening right now in the state of Indiana that we're watching, it's the the case with Joseph Corcoran and the Delphi murders case. Uh, in yeah. both cases, there's so much to get into, and uh, and I know I'll be talking to you soon about both. Uh, Nikki Kelly, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the News at 7. Thanks for having me.